All right. Thank you for watching Dragon Grove. My name is Blaze, and I just wanted to go ahead and review a couple talking points as far as the mixed reality headsets go. Now, I do have an unboxing video that also covers whether or not prescription glasses will fit, but I just wanted to kind of review some basic things that I've learned in the last two or three days of using a mixed reality headset and what my thoughts were on that. So these are the talking points that I'm going to cover in this video. We'll try to go through these kind of quickly. So we're going to talk about will the prescription glasses fit, which mixed reality headset should I buy, what do I need to know to hook up to a PC, can I play VR games with an MR headset, how do I access Steam VR from inside Cliff House, what's the difference between MR and VR, and shutting down suggestions, which I think is kind of important as well. So let's go ahead and get started. So to begin with, as I'd mentioned, I already have a video where I'm actually talking about uh, whether or not glasses are going to fit, which I highly encourage you to check out here on my channel on YouTube. You'll notice here that I'm actually, I've got the Hewlett Packard Windows Mixed Reality uh, controller box there, but I've also got the headset to the left. Uh, those are my glasses, which are roughly six and a half inches or so, something like that, close to seven inches. They're pretty big black frame glasses, so I was concerned whether or not they're going to fit inside the headset. They do. You can wear prescription glasses inside these headsets fairly easily. You'll see the picture down there where me, I'm actually holding the glasses inside of the headset itself. These glasses do not have very much clearance, and it is kind of funky to try to work them around in there so you can keep them over the lens, but you're having uh, maybe a little bit of difficulty when you're readjusting the headset to find that sweet spot uh, to kind of keep your glasses there and not have them hard pressed against your face. So just kind of work with it, but they will fit. They're just kind of snug. Now, what do I mean by sweet spot really quick while we're talking about wearing prescription glasses or even not wearing prescription glasses? Uh, these lenses are actually fixed, so they're not going to shift or adjust unless you get something like the Samsung Odyssey. A lot of the MR headsets out there right now, uh, the HP, the Acer, uh, the Lenovo, none of these have the ability to adjust the IPD or interpupillary distance. That's how far your pupils are from each other. Uh, now, there is uh, inside the Windows 10 app, you have the ability to adjust this with a slider, which slightly, I believe, alters it but ultimately they're kind of set uh, roughly, I think the default setting is 63 millimeters. Now for me, uh, my pupillary distance is actually 62, so it works for me, it's not a problem. Uh, with that in mind, you might want to know what yours are. I wouldn't recommend measuring them myself because when I measure them with a roller and look in a mirror like they suggest, it looks like it's 70 millimeters, but I went to get prescription glasses and they say it's uh, 62. So. Yeah, I would actually go to an eye doctor and, well, like glasses, like place that sells glasses or something, Pearl Vision or something along those lines, and ask if they don't mind measuring your pupillary distance real quick if you're curious. The thing is, when you put on the headset, you'll notice some blur. And the way that you work with that on these MR headsets is you shift them right, left, up, or down, maybe adjust the strap or the band. Uh, a lot of people suggest having that strap right underneath the base of the skull so it sits on your head properly. And... As you move around, you notice everything gets real clear in one spot. That's the sweet spot that people are talking about. So once you get it on and you have it in that sweet spot, you play and you completely forget about it. And even if the blur comes back a little bit here and there when you're moving around, you don't notice it really as much when you're immersed in a game. So at first, setting it up can kind of be a pain in the butt, especially if you're wearing glasses, because like I said, you've got to kind of keep that in mind when you're shifting them around. But I was able to successfully work with it and have great amounts of fun. So next talking point, because that one went over a little bit longer than I wanted it to. Uh, which mixed reality headset should I buy? Now, this one is 100% personal preference, and I highly, highly, highly recommend go out there to like a Microsoft store that has them on display, try them on, get a fitting for these headsets. Don't just pick one based upon suggestions. Now, they also will sometimes have floor demos and will actually let you use them so you can check out that blur I was mentioning about. So something I want to point out here, I've got the Google Cardboard, and I use the Google Cardboard for maybe 10, 15 minutes, and I will get sick and nauseous after about 20 minutes of use. I have not experienced that at all, even after two or three hours of play with the MR headset. It's not the same. The, the quality is just so much better. Now, 
each one of these have got pluses and minuses. Essentially, all the hardware is almost the same for what's out for the Series 1, besides for the Samsung Odyssey. That's got an amyloid display, and apparently it's uh, better picture quality. I didn't really notice that much of a difference, uh, maybe because I was just in Cliff House when I tried it on, but I personally did not like the Odyssey, uh, which I believe this one right here is the Odyssey. Uh, it felt heavy, bulky. This front part does not flip up. It was very hard to get my glasses into. The adjustment knob in the back, I just wasn't a fan. I did not get to try out the Asus because that was not out yet. Uh, the H Hewler Packard one is one, of course, I got. I picked that based upon its comfort. You can check that out in my other video. Acer, I didn't really like, and it kind of wiggled here in the front on this hinge, which flips up. I didn't try the Dell because I don't like Dell. I've never been a huge fan of that company. That's just personal preference. And the Lenovo felt to me kind of cheap, and the foam around the face felt kind of scratchy and not as soft or comfortable as the HP. So for me, the HP was perfect. Everything from the adjustment knob to the padding, just all around, I highly would recommend the HP. But that's me. I've had other people, and they prefer some one of the other ones. So you got to pick what's right for you, and you really have to try it on. It's the only way you're going to know for sure which headset is the one you should buy is checking them out. I would not go buy reviews. I would put it on my face. That's just personal preference. Uh, like I mentioned, the Odyssey does have that IPD adjustment knob. I'm not sure why none of the other ones do. Uh, what do I need to hook up to a PC? Well, uh, first and foremost, there's a cable that will actually come with it. Uh, the one plug of the cable will actually go inside the headset itself, but you will also have two other cables that are very close together and a little Y connection. There's not very much room. You need to have a USB 3.1 super speed port to plug that USB into, and it needs to be near an HDMI so that you can get them both plugged in. Uh, I was able to do this because my computer is like a supercomputer, uh, which has got like a 1080 Ti graphics card in there, and I've got this really nice Asus uh, Hero X9 motherboard, so I was able to get everything hooked up, but when I had it in the wrong USB, it wouldn't even turn on. It kept saying there was an error, so you have to have that plugged into the right spot to just keep that in mind. Now, are you wanting to use the motion controllers when you use the MR headset? I'm assuming you are. I mean, that's definitely a better experience than using just a controller, although there are games and reasons to use just a controller, keyboard, and mouse. These controllers, and this is something I wish they would have told me because it ruined a day of playing for me. I had to wait a day. You cannot use these controllers unless you have a Bluetooth 4.0 USB micro adapter for your PC. Here's the thing. These controllers do not sync with the headset. They sync with your computer or whatever system you're using, be it the backpack, laptop, whatever the case may be. So if your device does not have Bluetooth 4.0, go out, buy yourself a little dongle. They retail for anywhere from like, I think I've seen them as cheap as seven bucks up to about 20. I actually ended up going to Best Buy, got their insignia brand. It cost me $17 on sale. It fine with me, whatever. It goes in any USB port. And basically that allows you to sync it up to your computer on Windows 10. You recognize it through the settings, and then once you have that set up through the settings, you're good to go. So just keep that in mind. If you do not have Bluetooth 4.0, go buy that adapter when you pick up your headset. Uh, they didn't tell me about that at the Microsoft Store. Shame on them. I'm telling you right now, you'll need that. So the cable that comes with it and the uh, USB adapter, that's basically uh, for the Bluetooth 4.0. That's pretty much all you need to get it set up initially. Everything has a real easy, smooth setup process when you plug it in. It'll walk you through the whole process. Kind of cool. You do need Windows 10, by the way. Uh, can I play VR games with an MR headset? Now, I have Steam VR here because it's the only thing I've tried that was VR besides for what comes with Cliff House, which is the MR stuff. So it's everything's mixed reality inside the Cliff House. Uh, Steam VR, like Oculus Rift stuff or HTC Vive. Uh, for example, there is a game called Arizona Sunshine, which everybody's seeing and hearing about. It's like a zombie shooter. It's like 40 bucks. I've got some uh, video of me playing it on Twitch. So right there is your answer. Yes, Steam VR does have mixed reality support, and they're working on more for that. Now, do all of the VR games work? I don't know. But I have tried Arizona Sunshine, no problems whatsoever, and I have tried Gorn, which is another VR game, and they work flawlessly. It, it gets set up, and you play, and it's fine, and it's enjoyable, and it's, it's awesome. It, yes, it does work. Going on to the next talking point, how do I access Steam VR from inside a cliff house? So here's the thing. You can have your 
goggles flipped up, your mask, whatever you want to call it, your headset, you can have that flipped up and you can go ahead and access Steam VR. Now, when you have your headset plugged in, it's already going to have Cliff House up and then it will open Steam VR separately and then you go into a different waiting room altogether. Inside of the Cliff House, if you hit the Windows key, you get this little pop-up menu and you can hit plus, down, or whatever, go to the side. You'll see one of these little blue tiles actually says desktop. It actually lets you use your desktop in Cliff House. So you just select Steam and you aim your controller pointer at where it says Steam VR and it will boot up VR and it will take over and you'll go into Steam VR while in Cliff House without having to come back out. So it is possible to access your Steam VR from inside the Cliff House, which is kind of cool. Difference between MR and VR. This is an MR unit. This is the HP, the one I have. These two, this is two separate ones here, are VR systems. We're talking about uh, the Oculus Rift in the bottom here, and this is the HTC Vive, if I remember correctly. So, what's the difference? MR is mixed reality, VR is virtual reality. Well, isn't everything we're talking about virtual reality? Yes and no. All the games and programs and apps so far, yes, they're virtual reality. The mixed reality or augmented reality capabilities of the MR headsets are not being used. So, what do you got to do to use virtual reality? You have to have these little sensors placed all around your room and map out your room. They look at you like, idealistically, you want to set up four so you can get all corners of the room. But I mean, I guess you can do it with two. Like these are sensor boxes for one of these. I think that's maybe for the Vive. And then these two are for the Oculus. I don't know, because I don't own a VR headset. But they track your movement around the room with these sensors and the more you have the easier it is to track you so they track where the motion controllers are they track where the headset is where you're standing how you're moving and there's sensors inside the headsets themselves as well but this is how you actually use it by using these sensors uh, they see where these controllers and how you're interacting and moving them and twisting them there's a lot of cables there's a lot of wires and there's a lot of syncing up with this the mr headset is condensed and cheaper well, I know they're dropping the price in the VR, but this is cheaper. Right here and here on all of the headsets, there's cameras, like these sensors here. And these cameras here will track your controllers. So you don't need these sensors because the headset sees them, which also means while you are playing some games, if your controller is off screen, it'll sometimes glitch. Uh, you'll see when I'm playing Arizona Sunshine and I have the flashlight and I'm holding it up by my head when I'm looking around, sometimes it'll appear in my vision because my headset's not seeing my controller because it's back behind it. Now it can still get the orientation and it, there are trackers inside the controllers themselves so it still works and it still has the ability to be playable even when the uh, controller is off screen. Like I've had my guns faced in separate directions and I turn to one then I turn the other and it's still in the position I had it in. So it does work. It's just the MR headsets do have a little bit of trouble tracking the controllers. Uh, also, like I mentioned, there's the less cables. There's literally a single cable that has two plugs in your computer that comes here, and then you have your two controllers, and that's basically it for your whole setup versus your VR, which has all this other stuff. Now, there's another piece that's different about it, too. This MR, as I mentioned, augmented reality, uh, this has the ability to record the real world and actually overlay your game on top of it, kind of like the HoloLens. It's not being used right now, but the capabilities there. The Vive and stuff, I don't think they'll ever be able to do it. I don't know if they have cameras and stuff. I, I think it's going to be separate. These are fully VR only. Uh, these typically have your headphones built in like the Odyssey. These don't. Uh, you can plug headphones into these. All of them have the ability to plug in a set of headphones. You can like listen or you can just use your computer uh, speakers. It's completely up to you. So that's the main difference between the mixed reality and the virtual reality right there. Uh, moving on to the next talking point, because that was a long one as well. Shutting down suggestions. Now, the reason I put this in here specifically, which was my last major talking point, uh, was that when you have your uh, mixed reality open, if you just unplug the headset, that's not really good for it. And uh, at least from my experience, because next time I plug it in, the windows will actually crash, go to the blue screen of death and reboot. Now, since I've actually been manually shutting down the application, then unplugging your replug, it's working fine. So I just highly suggest close all your apps, don't just unplug your headset. Uh, I also wanted to point out a couple other things uh, that were unrelated to the talking points, uh, such as keep in mind the uh, wire itself gets really hot, I, like where you plug it into the headset, because the HP does disconnect.
so I have the ability to unplug my headset from the wire, which is plugged in the back computer. I find that extremely convenient. Not all of them have that. Uh, that detachable HP wire, though, to that headset I found very, very convenient, so I can keep that packaged up in the box when I'm not using it. Then I can plug it in when I want to, but that wire and that connection does get pretty warm to the touch, almost like a cup of coffee. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, the other thing I want to point out is no matter how many videos you watch here on YouTube, no matter how many times you see VR or MR in use, it is not the same thing as using it. Go out there, try a headset, get into a demo. I've always been fascinated with VR, like many of the people I grew, you know, born in 81, in the 90s, the uh, virtuality arcade systems and all that. When virtual reality is being talked about and going to come out, I was just as fascinated. I was on the bandwagon. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, this is great. Taking my gaming to the next level, being immersed. I want to do that. I was not prepared for MR. Even with using Google Cardboard and doing all this other stuff, there is nothing like sitting down in that game. You see me or anyone play Arizona Sunshine, it's like, oh, that's a cool shooter game. Oh, no, 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 no. Inside that headset, it is like you're there. It is three-dimensional. They're in your face. There is depth perception. It is wild. Like, I can't even... I can't even put it into words, just it's wow. It's beyond wow. And all the games, like Gorn and all the other ones that I played, I played The Lab from the Steam Workshop, all of them, having that item right there and looking at it, and you can get up on it or look from a different angle or hold it up to your face. Like in uh, Arizona Sunshine, I can actually pick up stuff and look at it and turn it around, or even the, the firearms when you're trying to aim down the sights, you close one eye and aim down the sight. You can actually do that. You don't have to keep both eyes open. You can sit here and aim like you would a normal firearm, and it is just unbelievable. It's just I, I can't even explain it. It's it's ever, and I keep saying that, but it's just it's just mind blowing. Like you see all these videos where people are, oh wow, this is amazing. You have no idea until you've tried it. Go out there, try it on. I highly recommend getting into virtual reality or mixed reality if you like gaming. You like the idea of immersion. It is. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Well, thank you for watching this video. I'm hoping it didn't go too, too long here. Uh, remember to... That doesn't say how long it's been going on for. Oh, 17 minutes. That's not too bad. Remember to thumb up, like, and subscribe. Uh, showing your support makes me keep making videos. Most of the stuff you'll see on this site are going to be basically just gameplay videos. But because I started getting in the mixed reality, I just wanted to share it with you and put out a few pointers. So, yep. Thank you for watching. Remember to tune in to me on Twitch TV and check out more videos here on YouTube.